there, welcome to episode nine of Behind the Brush. I'm Joy Baker with All About Art Gallery, and today I am joined by one of our local artists, Mary Miller Beasy. Hi, Mary. Hello. Thank you for joining me today. I'm pleased to be here. We are excited to welcome Mary here today. Uh, we've actually been representing her artwork for about eight years now, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and we love having her work here. Uh, Mary paints in a variety of styles. Um, I would say you're probably most well known for your portraits in oil, but you you paint you know so many different things. Um, namely, you know, I would say what's most popular here for us are your depictions of birds, and this is kind of a form of realistic impressionism, would you say? Yes. Nice. Um, and do you do these in acrylic or oil or what's I your chosen medium? Work in my day job, I consider um, portraiture. Mm -hmm. And I paint in oil because it's open, stays open longer, and mm -hmm. so you can move the paint around. Um, and about seven or eight years ago, I took a walk on the wild side and started painting with an abstract expressionist group in Nashville, mm -hmm. and they used acrylic. And have, having been an oil painter for so long, it was like child's play again for me to be able to paint in in a spontaneous manner where you could scrape the paint and drip and rub and add more paint and it dries quickly so nothing's really messed up unlike in watercolor where you're always preserving the white of the paper mm -hmm. or in oil where you're very meticulous on how you layer your paint mm -hmm. acrylic was just a fun uh, walk on the wild side if you would and um, so I found I still really like to see an image when I'm dripping paint and spattering paint and, mm -hmm. and experimenting with paint and application of paint. So I've sort of developed a style mm -hmm. that incorporates something that I can recognize as real mm -hmm. in an abstracted background. And I think that that sort of helps um, convey, particularly with birds, animals and fish, mm -hmm. um, the spontaneity of their movement, how they're always moving, they're always looking, mm -hmm. they're always aware of their environment. And the spontaneity of paint helps me convey that feeling mm -hmm. in animals and subject matter. Now when I go back to portraiture, which I will be doing soon, I take all of that fun equipment out <laughs> and I set up my oil, oil paints very uh, traditionally and I become very serious and love that as well mm -hmm. so it's a nice sort of a busman's holiday I get to paint in two styles mm -hmm. very meticulously and then very loosely do you have a preference between the two like do you prefer painting you know in one way versus the other or is it kind of like um, you have this structure with painting the portraits and then you have this freedom with painting the you know the abstract impressionistic pieces so it's kind of just like a balance of both it is and i find like many things when you're cooking you don't always want to cook italian mm -hmm. or french or cheeseburgers but you can, can you can use some of the um, ingredients in cooking particularly like italian you can add italian seasoning seasonings to your burgers and things like that so I can use some of the techniques that I've used in oil when I'm representing something realistically. Mm -hmm. And then I can use some of the spontaneous paint application in oils. Mm -hmm. But I still uh, like working, uh, I'm, that's, that's, you're making me think about yes. this. <laughs> well, I would imagine that you have to have, like even with the freedom of painting something so expressive and free like this, there has to be a certain amount of discipline involved in that as well to not just have, um, you know, like a crazy array of things going on on the canvas. So I would assume that the discipline that you have from doing your portraits is a large part of what makes this style of painting work. The, I agree because when you are painting, particularly oil portraits, most portrait artists have studied landscape and still life mm -hmm. figure and the rules that you know how to make a good painting mm -hmm. are applicable when you are making something a little bit looser and spontaneous. You're still looking for a, a focal point, you're still mm -hmm. looking for composition, you're looking for edge quality, harmonious colors, maybe then a, a pop of alien color to move your eye around the canvases, mm -hmm. which is what you would do 
in a good portrait mm -hmm. as well as a good landscape and a good still life and then hopefully a good non-representational painting. So is that kind of what you aim to communicate through your artwork is that there's, you know, a sense of discipline, but there's also a sense of freedom? Or is there something else that you sort of try to project from your works? I like how you say that, said that. I think that's really perceptive. And I go back to the cooking analogy. The first time you make spaghetti, mm -hmm. you're reading the cookbook, you're trying to find a measuring cup, you're trying to de determine how much a, a teaspoon of something is. By the 30th time you've made spaghetti, you're pretty <laughs> comfortable with it. And by the time you've made it 3,000 times, you're just dumping cans and talking and maybe having a glass of wine or <laughs> you know, walking the dog in between. Or You're very comfortable with the rules that make a good spaghetti. And mm -hmm. so I think that's with um, in doing a lot of painting and painting as a living and painting for my job, mm -hmm. I've been able to learn what the rules are and occasionally break them but yeah well i would say with you know the the more painting you do the more you would continue to grow as an artist um so as a seasoned painter do you feel like you are continually growing or are you continually learning new things or are you more practicing the things that you are you know fundamentally focused on as a painter that's also very perceptive joy <laughs> because the more you do something the more complacent you get with it mm -hmm. and comfortable yes. and so I think most painters really really enjoy stepping out of that box mm -hmm. and trying something hard mm -hmm. and, and you know getting out of their comfort level mm -hmm. so I do enjoy switching between mediums and, mm -hmm. and um, disciplines for that reason mm -hmm. so I can take some of the spontaneity back to when I'm working on something very detailed and specific and vice versa. I kind of felt that about your artwork. Um, you know, I, as I mentioned before, I feel like what people gravitate most towards um, here at our gallery is probably the, um, you know, the, the pieces with the birds, like the soft kind of um, palatable pieces. But every time you bring new works in, there's always something like different and unique. Um, right now we have a really cool painting of fish um, that are just kind of like free floating in this cool thing and there's also um, a really vibrant painting of a boat um, and all of these paintings you can look at them and you can tell that the same artist painted them I feel because it's got a little bit of the same hand to it but they're all wildly different um, and I think that that's so cool um, as an artist that you continue to branch out and try something new and not continue to paint the same thing over and over again you. you know everything is always different and fresh I feel <laughs> I try. <laughs> <laughs> and so on that note, um, you know, I know you just brought us some new pieces, but what are you currently working on? I have been doing a series of, of birds that are on the ground instead of in trees or in the air and um, doing fish in the water. And with the fish, I, I want them to be almost transparent. How you, you know, when you see fish in the water, mm -hmm. they're translucent or transparent. So I'm, doing lots of layering and in acrylic I'll put the paint on and take it off and, and use a uh, printmaking roller to sort of get some neat texture in there oh. and it's almost the the uh, layers of paint and the fish are within the layers so to me that conveys maybe the fish are in the layers of water yeah, like the depth of it mm-hmm nice. so I'm working on that and then I have some portrait commissions mm -hmm that I'm starting to do. So I have to go home today and put all my acrylics away, <laughs> and all my buckets, and then I have to put my oil paintings out and lay them out very, very specifically. And mm -hmm. But that'll be a fun project for a couple weeks. And then I'll go back to slinging paint again. Nice. <laughs> is your studio in your home? It is, it is. Can so I commute <laughs> between the rest of the house, the laundry room, and my studio. Mm -hmm. So if, if I'm in the, in the zone and the laundry goes off, I don't hear it. Or if I'm struggling with the painting and a passage is not working and the laundry bill goes off, thank goodness. Oh, I must get that. I must go. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice. It's, um, it, I have had studios outside of my house, and this is just so much more convenient. Yeah, I love great. painting plein air, but there's no bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so I really am enjoying having a studio at home. 
Nice. And I imagine you split your time between teaching as well. Are you still able to do that with kind of the current state of things with COVID or um, have you kind of taken a step back from that over the past year? I, I've backed away from teaching a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I, I loved it. I really loved it. And I still do because it's a way to communicate with people that have the same joy and passion that you do. Mm -hmm. And they want to be there and they want to learn. And that's, that's so rewarding. But I have really uh, run out of time to be able to do that. I, I am working on my own work mm -hmm. and uh, have just stepped back a little bit. Nice. Understandable. Well, Mary, this has been really great. I thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, we are all about art gallery. We're located in Hendersonville, Tennessee, and we represent more than 45 different artists from Middle Tennessee, Gallatin, Hendersonville, and internationally as well. Uh, Mary Miller Beasy being one of the greats. Uh, you can see more of her work here in the shop. We're located at 260 West Main Street in Hendersonville. Uh, or you can visit our website, allaboutartgallery.com. Mary, thanks again for coming. Thank you for